let's move on to Studio Ghibli dropping their first non uh, hand drawn animation film, uh, Earwig and the Witch. Mm-hmm. Dave, you are, I would say, the Studio Ghibli expert, bigger fan out of the two of us. I, I know them. I, I know the style. I have not watched the movies. How are you feeling about this Earwig and the Witch movie? Not good. Oh, no. Not good, man. Oh no. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a uh, the first time they did 3D computer animation. And did not go well. This is definitely definitely the worst Studio Ghibli movie I've seen. I have not seen all of them. I haven't even seen most of them. But every one I've seen, I've liked. And I think, as you said, the reputation precedes them as just a you know landmark animation house that has a long storied uh, history dating back to the '80s. And you know, this one, Irig and the Witch," was directed by Goro Miyazaki, the son. Of Hayao Miyazaki, one of the founders, the, of course, creator of the most celebrated Studio Ghibli films and the most successful ones. Um, everyone knows the hits, I have to imagine. Spirited Away would be the biggest of them all. But this is the first Studio Ghibli movie that's come out since we've been doing the podcast. And I thought it was quite notable. You know, I mean, the last one came out in 2014. And then at that point, the studio closed because Hayao Miyazaki had uh, retired. And then a few years later, it reopened because he said he was really bored <laughs> with retirement and he's making, um, everyone assumes, one final film uh, called How Do You Live, which is expected to come out in 2023. Uh, he's still hand-drawing it uh, with with the team. But he used to make about 10 minutes of animation a month, he says. Now he's only making about one minute. So the movie is just taking a long time. He started in 2016. Um, But that's obviously quite exciting. But in the meantime, this is what we've gotten out of Studio Ghibli since they reopened. Um, And Goro, uh, he's two movies before this, Tales from Earthsea and From Up on Poppy Hill. He's like one for two with that. So to have this one, like I think he's like kind of like a pariah at this point for studio ghibli fans but it, it's quite a i think a, a disappointing uh, return for the studio because um they're riding such good momentum too it's like hayo's back making a final masterpiece really exciting right mm-hmm. and uh, the other founder uh takata his last movie tales of prince the tale of princess kaguya came out in like 2013 with beloved 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 lost the oscar to big hero six that has not aged well he has since passed so it's like there needs to be like a future path for studio ghibli right because hayo is making one movie and he's probably done because he's 80 um what's left what's next and i don't think this is a uh a good sign (laughs) at least for goro i don't know because you know this is adapted from a novel by Diana Wynne Jones. Not the first time they've adapted stuff to Studio Ghibli. Not everything is 100% original. And that author also wrote Howl's Moving Castle, which was adapted into one of the best Studio Ghibli films. So it's like, I, I, there's a lot that went wrong. Clearly, we can get that in a second. And to me, it, it's just really frustrating because I feel like a lot of people have been getting into the Studio Ghibli movies for the first time because they, for the first time, became available on streaming in 2020 on HBO Max, they had not been streamable at all up until that point. That was kind of like a big sticking point for the studios. They were more fans of like programming it. Like there would be uh, yearly runs where they would should be like in the theaters for a weekend, some movies and the Blu-ray sales were obviously a big part of this as well. So like we're definitely in a new stage for the studio, right? And like the access is there. And I'd say stick to HBO Max where you watch Eerie and the Witch don't watch this if you somehow didn't see it already and watch the good shit. It's all there. It's finally easy to watch. Mm. Um, and I just hope they can learn from this. What Whether they stick the 3D or not versus hand-drawn, I'm not going to be a big stickler about it because I know like how expensive and time-consuming it is to make stuff hand-drawn. Mm. But like, man, like you think of the aesthetic of the hand-drawn animation and like it's so full of life and wonder and it's so rich and... Mm. Irrigan and the Witch, like, I think it's animated okay, but, like, it does not feel super rich. And then when you have this story that's really light on plot, um, 
it, it, it's quite the big miss. But how do you feel about someone who's not uh, invested in the studio? Yeah, so I found the film to be pretty uninspired in terms of the overall story, um, but not not to the point where I was like, this is really bad. I just was like, oh, you know, this seems like a kid's movie. Like, they're trying to, like, make it just interesting enough where, like, a kid will be invested and there's fun stuff happening, but maybe not, like super intense for like an adult is like oh like that's that's interesting or i'm really captivated by that kind of like dick pixar really um is able to thread that yeah. needle a lot we talk about that i think i was more taken aback by the clunkiness of some of the animation at points like sometimes the way people would take steps or walk or like start to stand in place i just felt like was not done super well which i was like huh i i didn't expect that i was expecting the animation to be pretty flawless but probably should have recognized that this is their first attempt at this sort of animation so it's not going to be you know 100 out of 100 um i i do think the characters looked really cool and like um i love like the flowy like witches like hair and those colors i i yeah. thought like when the when the mandrake would get really mad and like when he became like that huge like hulking devil like character i thought that was done pretty good like so th there were some things i was like this is pretty interesting um i'm actually really intrigued to see the second film because i feel like i'm way more interested in earwig's mom than anything else i just want to learn more <laughs> so i'm i'm right. interested to like probably get that part of the story than this part well, and that was what's so weird because, like, it sets up with like this whole backstory about why she's like running and yeah. has to leave Yearwig at the orphanage, and that is completely abandoned. Like, it's like mm -hmm. made up backstory as if it didn't even happen. Like, and that that was the thing for me with the movie. It's like I can ignore the animation; no, it's not a problem. But like, I had a hard time like wrapping my head around what like the central conflict was. Right. Yeah, it's like being these people are like antagonists but they're not like yeah. yeah and it's like and that's the thing it's like there's lots of stuff in studio ghibli where it's like smaller scale not everything's like super grand like princess mononoke it doesn't have to be like that but like i, I just found it kind of unfocused mm. and was having a hard time trying to like latch on to like what i'm supposed to be learning what journey i'm supposed to be on you know so yeah i guess like it's a meta criticism because i'm comparing it to like more richer narratives from the past from studio ghibli but Sure. Well, yeah, that's a good point. I think the conflict that they kind of came back to at the end was like, how does Earwig take control, uh, you know, of, of whatever place she's in? And the tension was that she wasn't able to do that. But then then she she figured it out by the end. Um, and then I guess like the next conflict is going to be making sense of her mom being there. But I don't know what's going to come of that. Uh, notable, um, some great voice actors in this you know richard <laughs> e grant is uh yep. the mandrake dan stevens is her friend thomas um yeah. a lot of more of him as the cat yeah casey musgraves um is the the mom so i'm like again I'm, barely I'm in. though she's barely in it <laughs> right i'm in though let me uh let me hear these people voice act so hopefully yeah. we'll get some more of that in a second film i want to hear more of what you didn't like though because I, I can tell that you're pretty disappointed with this I say in general, they do a good job with like the dubbing English voice cast member. Uh, Christian Bale is in uh, Howl's Moon Castle, I believe, and Shia LaBeouf, young Shia LaBeouf, was in one of them. Like, they always, they always get good talent to do the English dubbing. Um, but yeah, no, I think for me it was just like the story. Story didn't grab me, and like I feel like the like that kind of like whimsy you can expect from like smaller scale Ghibli stories. Uh, I just didn't have and maybe maybe if the animation was hand drawn maybe I, I i would have been more forgiving but for whatever reason i just had a hard time like connecting mm -hmm. connecting with it like every time like they're in the uh the witch's like lab brewing yeah. area i'm like waiting for like some like sparks and i just didn't, I didn't feel like i was getting them like as a kids movie you know I, i'm sure kids are entertained watching earwig you know mm -hmm. have fun and like torment these these older people and stuff <laughs> like it it's all good fun but yeah i think like thematically i just kind of was thinking it would be richer than it was yeah yeah it it, it was only uh what 80 minutes or yeah it was something short. like that it was short so it seems like they're setting up for maybe a couple of movies attached to this in the long run we'll see and, and that'd be interesting too if studio ghibli 
increase their output to that degree. Because yeah. as of right now, we only know of the one Hio is working on. We don't know of any other projects. So right. that'd be interesting. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Earwig and the Witch. Maybe don't check it out, but watch the other Studio Ghibli movies. Yeah. You, you can do better. 